Well, let's focus in more on tomorrow's fall economic statement. And joining us right now to talk about what they'd like to see in the foyer of the House of Commons, Conservative finance critic Jazraj Singh Hallen and NDP House Leader Peter Julian. Hello to both of you. Good to be hey. with you. Listen, I want to begin uh, with housing, obviously, because all parties in the House are talking about the importance of housing right now. And today, as you both know, there are reports that suggest the Liberals will be uh, rolling out tomorrow billions of dollars of government-backed loans in order to make housing possible. Uh, what's your reaction to that, Mr. Singh Hallen? I'll, I'll begin with you. Oh, thanks for having me. Look, after eight years of this <laughs> government, housing starts today <clears throat> are down 14%. And actually, after eight years, housing costs have doubled. Rents have doubled. Mortgages have doubled. It's, it takes double the amount just to save up for a down payment on a house after eight years. This is the failed housing record of this Liberal government under Justin Trudeau, where they spent, they've committed $89 billion to housing, only to double the costs on it. Seems like a failed policy to me. Uh, we don't see much hope in the future since we, now that we know housing starts are down as well. They're great at photo ops and you know they can get an A plus for that, but photo ops, don't, photo ops don't build houses and neither does bureaucracy. That's why our common sense leader put forward a housing motion and a, a bill inside of parliament that, that was literally that says, build more homes, not more, more bureaucracy, which would incentivize municipalities to increase their permitting by 15% so that we can get more houses in. The more that they, the more that they build, the more they'll get. The more they don't build, the, if they don't build, then they will have their funding stopped. Okay, I, I'm gonna follow up on, on a couple of points that you raised there, but uh, Mr. Julian, I'll get you to react first. What do you make of this uh, billion dollars worth of government-backed loans to get rental housing built in this country? Uh, well, the NDP has been pushing hard on housing for one very good reason. The last 17 years, including the nine years of the, the, the Harper regime, have been absolutely disastrous for housing. The Conservatives doubled housing prices, and then the Liberals have doubled them again. And we saw Mr. Polyev and his government lose 800,000 affordable housing units. The Liberals have lost another 200,000. That's over a million affordable homes that have been lost. So what Jagmeet Singh and the NDP have been pushing for is to, to build affordable housing again. This is what we use to do before the Conservatives and Liberals wrecked the National Housing Program. And what it does mean is people being, being paying a 30% of their income in terms of rent rather than the $2,500, $2,600 a month rents that we're seeing for one bedroom apartments in my area in the Lower Mainland. So the Conservatives and Liberals have made a complete mess of things. The NDP has been pushing hard so that we re-establish the affordable homes that the Canadians need. And it's not luxury condos, which Mr. Trudeau and Mr. Polly have seemed to favor. It's really building affordable homes that's going to make a difference for Canadian families. Okay, let's let's build on that, Mr. Julian, because, you know, we did see Mr. Uh, Singh stand outside of a, a Toronto co-op last week as he, as he outlined what the NDP wants to have in terms of housing. But spell that out for people at home, because right now, these billions of dollars, they're actually meant to be build rental housing, uh, sorry, rental housing, does that not help? Uh, building affordable homes makes a big difference. Having, having that rent capped at 30% of income makes a huge difference. That, that's, what we saw, that's what we saw with the co-op housing movement. That's what we saw, be, of course, with social housing across the country. When, before the National Housing Program was gutted, uh, what we saw was a lot of investments from the federal government in building affordable housing across the country. And, and that's why we believe that the, the federal government has that responsibility to start building again the affordable housing units that Canadian families can live in. Okay, Mr. Singh Hallen, I'll get you to first and foremost react to that. What do you think of earmarking this more towards affordable housing, not just rental housing? Look, under our common sense conservative leader's plan, the plan is to build, build, build. That is the goal of this bill that we put forward because we've seen eight years of Justin Trudeau enabled by the NDP of municipalities getting money shoveled to them in the millions and billions of dollars, but there's no shovels in the ground. The Liberals came out with a national housing strategy program two years ago. Not a single house has been built under this failed program, yet they brag about it and they do these great photo ops. It's time to stop with the photo ops and build, build, build so we can get more and more people into homes after eight years of this Liberal NDP government. Nine out of ten young people say they'll never be able to afford a home or get into one. Newcomers are li literally living under bridges and in their cars. 
more and more people going into a food bank in a single month. This is the failed record after eight years of this liberal NDP government. Our common sense plan will make sure more gets built, we get more supply, and by balancing the budget like we've been asking for, we can bring down the cost of mortgages and rents that have all doubled under this liberal NDP government. Okay. And, and what and we, we just, saw, I just want to point out that under the Conservatives, what we saw is, is their emphasis is on luxury condos. They, and we saw with the Doug Ford government actually giving, feeding, uh, very wealthy developers, more space, more public lands for, for luxury condos. Uh, the Conservatives don't have a plan at all. In fact, Mr. Polyev has rejected any sort of affordable housing. And so the reality is Conservatives have to answer for the fact that they have no plan at all on housing, that, that they are half responsible for the housing crisis that we're living through, uh, housing prices having doubled under the Conservatives, doubled again under the Liberals, and, and Mr. Polyev and his government losing 800,000 affordable housing units across the country. The Conservatives have never apologized for that devastation that has created the housing crisis that we see today. Okay, Mr. Singh Hallen, then, you know, we've heard Pierre Polyev talk about, uh, and today alone, for example, talking about uh, once again, axing the tax to, to make things more affordable for people. And also, as you talked about, getting the deficit under control in order to, to get the economy back in control. You know, connect the dots for people. How does that actually help people right now who are struggling to pay their mortgage, struggling to make ends meet? Well, absolutely. Before I address that, I'd just like to let my, my friend Peter Julian know there is a plan for housing under the Conservatives. It was literally tabled in the House of Commons. I mean, I can email it to him if he'd like. I hope he checks his email. So, I mean, there, it's in writing and it's inside of Parliament. I hope that they'll help us push that through so we can get more built in this country. Yes, our common sense Conservative leader has three asks, and us Conservatives have three asks of this fall economic statement, which sometimes just turns out to be a bunch of a false promise update. Number one, balance the budget so that we can bring down interest and inflation so Canadians don't lose their homes. We've seen the most rapid interest rate hikes after the 40-year highs in inflation caused by this Liberal NDP government's out-of-control spending, and now Canada is most at risk in the G7 for a mortgage default crisis. So if, unless we balance the budget, inflation and interest can't come down. That's our first ask. Number two is help push our common sense conservative leaders plan to build more homes and not more bureaucracy as I mentioned and number three like you said axe the quadrupling of the carbon tax that's going to quadruple in April of next year because we've seen the cost of gas groceries and home heating go up we've seen the prime minister do a massive flip-flop on his carbon tax scam he gave 3% of Atlantic Canadians, or 3% of Canadians in Atlantic Canada, a pause on this carbon tax, a carve out, a temporary one at that. And that's because his poll numbers were tanking there and his MPs were revolting. We're asking for all Canadians to get a pause on all home heating across Canada, and then we should get a referendum on the next, uh, in the next election. Call a carbon tax election. Let's see what Canadians have to say about that. And how will that help Canadians today? Well, we can stop with the increase in gas groceries and home heating with the carbon tax. We can help to build more homes Excellent. with our plan and make sure that we can bring down interest rates so Canadians don't lose their homes. And so, Conservatives okay. are missing a very important point, which okay, is the, point the carbon here, tax here. doesn't apply to British Columbia and Quebec. And, and the Conservatives actually said no to the NDP plan to take GST off home heating, which would have had an impact right across the country. So I don't know if, if Conservatives are just ignorant of the fact that they were, are pointing out to a solution that doesn't even hit most uh, many of the provinces, or if they knew that and just thought that they could try to slide that by Canadians. The reality is Mr. Polyev just wants to buy luxury condos, wants to hand over public lands and public buildings to rich developers, and we saw how that worked with Doug Ford, and we saw what happened in Ontario with the Greenway. It's time that we actually follow the kind of, of a leadership that Jagmeet Singh has been offering where we're actually building affordable homes for people. And this is something that we used to do in the past before conservatives and liberals gutted the national housing program. Now it's time to get back to affordable homes, homes that people can afford, homes that are based on 30% of income, uh, not homes that are $2,500 a month uh, for a one bedroom apartment. And uh, most Canadians uh, simply don't have the resources to pay for. Well, I look forward to hear uh, what both of you have to say tomorrow once the economic statement is actually tabled. Jazraj Singh Halan and Peter Julian, thank you for this tonight. Thank you. Thank you.